Today we're going to take a look at using Rad Polar Chart, part of the brand new Rad Chart View Control featured in Intelric Rad Controls for Silverlight and WPFs control suites for .NET XAML development. In today's video, we're going to take a quick step through creating a brand new Rad Polar Chart, which includes defining the chart grid, choosing the axis types we want to display, and adding and customizing data series that we want visible on the chart area. To do this, we're going to step into Visual Studio 2010. As you can see, I've already added the Telerik Windows Controls, Telerik Windows Controls Chart, as well as Telerik Windows Data Assemblies, so we're all set to go. And since I use the Telerik Visual Studio extensions, we can also see the Telerik namespace is all set and ready for us. Stepping into the XAML, we'll go ahead and use IntelliSense to say Telerik Rad Polar Chart. Once we close those brackets, we can see a Visual Studio helper, which would let us create both polar and radar charts as well as a little bit of intuitive design sense that we have not set the polar axis or angle axis for our new rad polar chart. We'll get to those, but first we want to go ahead and define our rad polar chart grid. So Telerik rad polar chart dot grid, which brings us to a Telerik polar chart grid. And now we have a lot of options as far as what we want to display, specifically how we want our polar and radial lines to be displayed. So if we scroll on down, we can see options for polar line dash array, polar line style, radial line dash array, radial line style. So we can set a lot of things for our grid here. In our case, we're going to set some distinctive polar line and radial line dash arrays. So we'll say 10, 10, and then radial line dash array will be 20 and 10. So we now have our grid set. So we'll go along with what the designer is saying and choose both our polar and our angle axis. So we can say Telerik rad polar chart. First, we're going to do our polar axis. In this case, it's going to be, t we get the spelling right, Telerik, polar axis. And we don't have to do anything else to get this displaying. And now that our polar axis is set, we have to go ahead and set our radial axis. So Telerik, rad, polar chart, radial axis. In this case, Telerik, we want to do a numeric radial axis, since we know we're working strictly in degrees. We can actually see the designer is updating now, so we have our polar and radial axe both displayed. And of course, last but certainly not least, we're going to need a series. Of course, the designer is saying so. So we'll go ahead and say Telerik, and we have two options right now, between polar and radar. In this case, we also have area, line, and point for any of these. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it really easy and say polar point series. And of course, with this, we have two things we want to bind. First up will be angle binding, called X angle, and we also have value binding, called X value. Keeps it really simple. And of course, last but certainly not least, our designer is saying we have no data to plot. So we have to go ahead, save this, and stepping into code, we're going to go ahead and load up some data. So this dot loaded, brand new method there. We're also going to want a class to hold our data, so we have our polar data class, which has x angle and x value. We're going to put that into a list, polar data class, polar data equals new list of polar data class. We're going to want a randomizer, so random equals new random. For loop, we're only going to do this up to 8, you'll see why. So polar data class, pdc equals new polar data class, pdc.x angle will equal i times 8, which is going to step us through the different angles of the chart, so 0, 45, 90. Oh, means we have to multiply it by 45 to get that effect. And we also have pc dot x value. We'll make this a simple random dot next double times 100. Of course, we want to add this to our polar data collection. pdc. And last but certainly not least, our x polar chart dot series and of course a series notation or rather index notation this is the first series so we'll use zero set our item source and this is going to be polar datas now again the cool thing about this and the reason why i'm setting it this way is this means that for as many chart areas that you have displayed in your cartesian or polar chart you can have different item sources meaning you're not limited to a single source of data so it can come from different websites you can be providing a mishmash of data, or mashup as they call them. Um, so there's a lot of options for how you get data displaying together on these charts. This is just one of them. But of course, now that we have data going to our chart, we're going to save this and run it and see what we get when Internet Explorer pops up. 
Now, much as you'd expect, we have items going at the 0, the 45, 90, 135, 180, and on and on through our entire polar chart. And we can see it was just that easy to get all this data displaying with custom lines for both the radial and the axis, as well as the ability to define what series you want and what data is going to that series. So it's actually very, very easy to get this chart set up. And if you watch the original Getting Started video for the rad chart view, as I mentioned before, we didn't have this possibility in the old rad chart. So this is something that's brand new for rad chart view, and we're very excited to see this built upon in future releases of this brand new control. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to use rad polar chart. And again, that's part of the rad chart view control. That's now part of the Telerik rad controls for Silverlight and rad controls for WPF control suites. And of course, this is part of a series, so stay tuned for more videos showing off new features and functionality in RAD Chart View. So stay tuned for more.